Alright guys, so this isn't necessarily a guide, this is just some gameplay of the of the Shadow of the Apocalypse mission, but I will still give some tips and pointers where I feel they're doing. One of the biggest ones being bring a fucking Ash of Agony guys, please. Don't bring Torpor Tantrum, don't bring Dark Briar Barrage, don't bring Full Tank Tempest, don't bring Stagger Storm, bring Ash of Agony, okay? Y'all niggas need to learn to get good. Stop relying on them hindrance statuses and just go for the straight offense. The reason why I say that is because you guys kinda lose productivity when you go for the Torpor Tangent and will take Tempest. However, with the Ash of Agony, you guys aren't limiting yourself to having to be in the area to kill your enemies. You can literally just spam the bomb as you like go on and like kill enemies. Oh, okay, well. I didn't expect to see him over there, but that's cool. I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap these guys up. I don't really mind fighting around the harvesters simply because you can technically hit around, but the issue with that is that you're kind of forced to do a hit and run tactic where you're like, you know, attacking the souls when you gotta run around and then go back and attack them. And all during that time, it's like if you can't manage to kill them, then this guy already bit the dust. But yeah, if you can't manage to kill them in time, then you're kind of screwed because then they'll just disappear on their own. So you know what I mean? They have a timer out, so. Hmm. Like, what I mean by the Ash of Agony being affected, though, that like, you can use that to also, like, break the blocks, and then if the Scarabs just come out, then they just instantly get wrecked by Ash of Agony. Oh, no. He's, he's really just fighting the dust, man. What the fuck? Bruh. <laughs> he's, getting, he's getting demolished, bro. Alright, well, yeah, guys. That's what I'm talking about here by um, Ash of Agony being helpful. Because you can see, they just spawn they instantly in the fire. It's more helpful on the scarabs, but of course Ash of Agony damage is still more than will take Tempest and shit, so there's one down there and there's one up here. Okay, where's the last one? Come here, boy. Oh gosh, no AT Atrons just love to flail around like crazy, ain't it? Not really. Okay. Hmm. You get hit by them dashes, yeah? This guy. Alright then. The scarab volume isn't even that bad at the moment. The fact that I hear his arcana bullets mean that he's freaking near. That means the harvester is also near, so I just gotta be a little bit. You know, careful. Oh, I hear him. I'm gonna kill that and then get out. I'm just gonna move over to the right. I'd rather not spawn any of the souls around him just because I'll be forced to, you know, do what I just what I said earlier. Don't just freaking attack and run around. Which I don't necessarily find the, the most helpful. Oh boy. I try my best not to take damage like as you guys can see it's death 29 and I still have three health caps I never used a single health cap on the first one at death 27 then we got an arena at death 28 and I just skipped it I just did the first room left you know like i slid all three health caps from the first one which is nice i focus mostly on trying my best not to take damage while killing the soul just because you don't get hearts from this shit and i don't like using sparks so like you know then he has no time limit on these missions so no point in trying to like get yourself killed and shit just be smart about what you do so i'm kind of showing you guys how i play you might be able to learn something from it see some little tactics i do when it comes to dealing with scarabs, how I move. 
you know, I'm just seeing what I can do to be somewhat helpful here. So after I take out this, I can go ahead and show you guys how to clean these guys up with Ash of Agony. Alright. Mmm. Just out of reach. Okay. So, just walk in straight lines, pretty much. Alright. And then let the Ash of Agony do the rest. They'll just fly right through them. Oh, shit. Okay, well, yeah. You guys will see what I do to avoid getting hit by the Harvester. All you gotta do... As you go straight, and then you do a little juke line. Yeet. Okay, so I guess I'm soloing now. Summon up aggro 24/7, which is not fun, of course. But I guess that means I get to really show off my skills here. I like doing so I'll do that the order is purple red yellow I don't know if I remember that purple red yellow okay I mean if I get caught I'll just leave my last grave cloak because the last is and I'm not going to use it just to avoid it because there's no point in trying to despawn him with a cloak he'll just get the aggro on you right again you know so the best thing to do is just to hold aggro and just kind of move a little bit quicker than the tentacles so that you can always be one step ahead of him and always have a little bit of an opportunity to like farm these souls before he gets there but don't go too far because then you'll spawn right next to you so it's like you kind of want to keep him chasing you rather than spawning on you because see how he just spawned on me that means he's like really really damn close but if yeah exactly like that and then boom he's gonna get those tentacles off so let's go in a straight line while the tentacles chase a bit and then just dash to the side and then boom he just despawned i just saw a little tick so he's gonna be spawning nearby me again so I'd rather go into an area which I already started farming first because he's going to farm and he's going to teleport right next to me. And when he does that, I'm going to have less time to farm around here. So I'd rather start or finish off an area which I already started doing. I'm just going to pop this right here. He's right underneath me, southwest it sounds. Yes, southwest. Alright, there's tentacles. Just dash around. I'm going to do a little despawn here like that and let him go away so I can take these guys out quicker. That's also another technique you guys can use with the cloak is to mask up and then quickly take out the souls and get your sigils like that. Some people just use it to escape the guy and I'm like, eh, it's kind of being a bitch. But it, it does work. It's just that the thing is when you're solo, it doesn't work as well as when you're in a group. So technically when you're in a group, you can just technically just send the guy to the other player all, as much as you want just by simply cloaking out. So here he is, I'm going to get to showcase kind of fighting around him again, showcase, um, yes, okay, so he's going to go that way. That was a little bit more risky just because, like, the scarabs around. The blocks and the gravestones are always going to be around, I'm not going to, okay, I'm going to do this. Hopefully I can make it here in time, perfect. So now, oh! And I was here hoping I could, but I couldn't. Okay, well, we'll just go around, keep on knocking tombstones and shit. Got aggro, of course, because who else is there? He's up there sending them tentacles. When you guys see the little effects coming on the ground, you know that they're spawning. Alright. I'm gonna go ahead and start doing some crowd control on these little scares real quick. He's to my right now. Oh, that was kind of close. So yeah, as you guys can see, these guys just drop like flies. Look at that. <laughs> They're just dropping. I'm not even touching them. With Torbertangium, they don't take damage. They just fall asleep and they have no invincible frames. So you gotta still kill them yourself. You see what I'm saying? So like, that slows you down. This doesn't slow you down. You can keep just going around, doing your thing, and boom, everything's blessed. So... It's not necessarily what you farm, but I know that this is not done. I'm only like 50% done this level, I think. Like, maybe 45. <laughs> like, there's a shit ton of meaning, because I know Platinum didn't get a chance to do much, because he was getting his ass handed to him half the time. No offense, I'm just saying. It's kind of what happened. 
so I'm gonna wait for them tentacles to start like that. I I was, I might that might look a little bit cocky of you waiting for the tentacles, but it's like the reason why I didn't ask is I kind of wanted to save my little dash spot because the best way to avoid this guy is by going in a straight line and dashing 90 degrees like a perpendicular um, kind of movement that per that like perfectly throws off the tentacles because they normally go in like a straight diagonal line. So like when you do a, an abrupt curve like that, it normally just prevents you from getting hit. So like for example, I can wait here run this way okay see this is a horrible part because now i'm forced to like dash like that you see how i had to go up and then back down that kind of gave it a chance to catch me there so i mean it was kind of good i managed to pull that off because like well i know what i'm doing but it's like i'm trying to i'm just trying to explain this better it's like to go it's trying to it's best to go on a straight line like this and then just da okay perfect so i'll wait here go in a straight line and then dash down all right and then that always like literally 100% of the time you'll you'll manage to escape because like once the way I see it is that think of it like a snake kind of like you guys know the game snake where like it gets longer every time you um, eat one of the pieces of food well this one doesn't get longer however it's a snake which is limited to making one drastic curve so it's like the best thing to do is to force it to make its curve now so it's gonna curve this way and then throw it off Alright, like that, because it can only make one big curve. You see how it like ran out of ran out of tentacles? Because you kind of want to stall that out. You want to make it turn when it has no resources left to catch you. That's the goal. That's like that's how you avoid getting caught 100% of the time. And as you guys can see, I don't take damage because one, I don't get caught. Two, it's only from the scarabs, and that's only if I'm really just being stupid and not being able to dodge a straight line. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. I'm not trying to be offensive here as in saying if you guys die here you're bad because I know that like 90% of people do and it doesn't necessarily mean that they're bad players it's just they gotta you, you might not know exactly how to deal with this guy but it's like see I can just literally just chill right over here and just do what I'm doing not not fearing shit just because look at that I just forced him to use up his drastic turn over there and then boom the guy was left with totally no more tentacles left so boom he's gonna go straight for me here I'm gonna dash left this time. All right, boom! No, nothing left. Nothing left. Like, that's all you guys gotta do, man. It's hella simple. And that's why I say like, it doesn't really matter if you're in a group, but it's just that you'll have constant aggro. And I don't really like the fact that I have to be running all the time from the tentacles because if I were to have found souls when he's here, then I'm forced to like freaking run around and let the soul timer go out. See, this is the bad spot here. Okay. Luckily, I managed to get around, but he's still right there, so I mean... Oh, perfect. He despawned at the perfect time. Awesome, awesome. Okay. Um, let's just go around. Just continue farming. Yeah, yeah, I got aggro. Nothing new. Nothing new. But this is actually a nice little spot to have, but I think I hear him to the right. Yep, there he is. I'm going to try and use this hammer dash to my advantage. Okay. Here, the tentacles should be coming really soon. Perfect, perfect. Per okay, I get the souls? I don't even know, but... Whatever. Let's go and try and farm this area as good as we can. I should probably pop down an Ash Magni here, just to be... Just to help out with that, you know... Scarab crowd over there I saw. He sounds like he's from the... West. Northwest. Slightly northwest, okay. I want to keep him kind of close though, like that. Okay, perfect. Oh, there's some souls there, so this is not perfect. So I kind of need to go back up here. But you guys see, I'm not using health caps, I'm not taking, I'm rarely taking damage here. Like, this is how you guys farm this professionally. Not freaking wasting sparks of life every two seconds. <gasps> All right, this is a hard part right there. Like that almost got me caught if I never made that erratic jump. He's still up there. He might despawn soon. I don't know if he will, cause I kind of went back up. Yeah, I went up really quick. I'm gonna try and bait those here now. Dash. All right, perfect. So let's just go ahead and continue. I'm gonna go drop another one of these bad boys, cause I see some bombies coming in. I didn't even see them. I just saw little sparks up top. You guys can catch those sparks and they'll if if you can see their sparks they'll most likely see you pretty much it's one of those ones let me just bait that now dash 
All right, perfect. See how I went a straight line? <laughs> like this, that guy broke his tentacles ankles. Now he just despawned. I can go up here and see if there's any s any stones around here which are in turn, but I don't know. I think I need to farm the southern hemisphere. Ah, hemisphere. I hear him right there, southeast. Okay, I'm gonna go avoid that. Yeah, I hear that little slithery, slithery motherfucker. Okay, so I remember this elevator section, so yeah, I found the southeast of there. I should probably check down here. I should find some more tombstones, I believe. I believe, I'm not hundred percent, who knows, I might have actually found a fair bit. Thing is, it looks like the elevator is hella north of this, um, map, so... Hmm... Oh, purple, red, yellow. Oh, you motherfucker. Yeet! Ugh. Okay, you know I'm gonna be a little... Oh, I shouldn't have wasted it. Ugh. Okay. Alright, so I just wanted to make sure I could do this without being interrupted, so I use my cloak there. Okay. Um Well yeah, that's another technique you guys can do when you're doing that, just do it incognito. Ooh, this is a really bad this is really bad. It's not good to have a lot of them at once just because if he finds you like this, you have a limited time to catch every single one. So now you guys get to see me going freaking Apocrya tryhard mode while I have constant pressure on me. I think, I think he's sending tentacles, I don't even know. I don't know, but let's go. Alright, I got him. Ha ha ha. Wait, 18. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Boom! All of them. Got them all. Really fast. That's awesome. And it seems like there's a lot of freaking stones around here unturned, as I said. Seems like the south, the southern, uh, southern hemisphere of this map needed to be covered, and in particular the western section of it. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and start Ash Bagneying, as you guys will see this effectiveness in full force again. When you have a bunch of scarabs and they're all flying through it, it helps illuminate the map a little bit. Of course, it'll kind of draw attention to you. Not like he can necessarily see like what's going on. He just knows where you are at all times, but it's kind of more like. Um, it kind of slows you down when you're doing the bombing thing and kind of cutting around, so it's like, it'll give him more chances to go after you. Uh, can I get this one off? Can I get this one off? Okay, straight and then right. Right. Okay, good, 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 good. Wait for it, wait for it. Knock these. Okay. Is he gonna despawn? I don't know, but we cleared that section. Uh, let's see now. Yeah, yeah. I know I got that girl. He's after my sexy black ass. I know you. I know you, man. I know you. Alright. Boom. Uh, the fire patch. I don't know where the fuck the fire patch is. But, uh, I already got one of the secrets, so I'm perfectly content with that. I only care about that candle one, mostly. And the other one with the key, like, where you have to walk around. But, I, I haven't even seen that one yet. Hmm. Mm. Oh, hello there. You know your ankles broken again? Mm -hmm. You want to get them ankles broken, son? Yeah? Well, they just did. <laughs> uh, there's nothing around here. Let's check at the top right. Maybe there's stuff up here I totally missed, actually. I want to be surprised, like, in the far top right, maybe? There, there might be stuff. He just despawns. He's going to be spawning around here. Hopefully, he spawns on my little... Oh. That might trap me, actually, so I should probably start going straight down. Alright, there he is. So, yeah, let's just go straight. And then, boom. See, like, this level is practically done. I can't believe I have not used a single health cap in either of the levels, though. That's ridiculous. That's freaking crazy, like... Wow. That's actually really good. Like, it's one thing not dying, but not even using health caps in this shit, like, that's actually pretty impressive. Alright, let's go. Yeet! Like, normally people are out of health caps by this point. Alright. There should be one more, I believe. Let me just see where he is. I totally forgot where he went. Like, the last soul, I mean. I should be able to outrun him here. Yeah. The good thing about it is that if I, since I had my shield up and I wasn't too close, even if that thing were to have caught me, it would have just deflected off my shield. 
So, that's nice. I also recommend not using such a buckler here and using an actual 5 star shield so you can actually sponge the tentacle. Like, if you're too cl like if you're too close, then obviously that's going to overpower your shield, but if it's only one tentacle coming at you, you should be able to block it off. Ugh, I tried shielding before that, but it's fine. Ooh, you block that little green one. I need to get that. But he's right there. Ugh, that was a disappointment. And he's right there again. I hear you, I hear you, man. Oh, it's in my case. Okay, so it's south, it's south, south, east of the elevators where the fire patch is located. Since I haven't found it before, that means there probably are some stones right next to it. So I'm gonna go invisible, let him despawn, and then just scout around here to see if it's worth it. Uh, yeah, there's a fair bit around here. Yeah, a little bit right, a little bit left. Cool, cool. Alright. Go see what's Gucci. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There we go. Looking good. We got some more. He's my northeast. Okay, northeast. Okay, now it's time for health cap. You guys see. First health cap busted. Ah, oh, I just used my freaking dash when he's there, but I think he despawned just now, did he? Oh, perfect. Go offensive, 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 offensive. He can spawn anywhere outside the map. Ugh! Horrible spot, man. Okay. Where's that soul? Where's that soul? Okay. Now let me go back here. Perfect. He's also on my left, so I can finish farming this side of it. Awesome. Nah, I don't care about aggro. I'm always gonna have aggro in a solo. That's kind of a good thing. You guys gotta get comfortable working with the constant aggro. Some people just sacrifice one person to bait him around, and it's like, yeah, that's cool, but as you can see, you can have him on your ass the whole time and still play just fine. It doesn't matter if he's on you or not, because he can't do shit to you. He's, he's unable to do shit physically. He's unable to do shit. I can literally just stand right here. I ain't gonna do shit because he can't reach me. All you guys gotta do is know his movements and play accordingly. You know, don't be stupid when you guys play. If you hear him coming, just start start moving. Like, even if there's souls in front of you, just start boogieing. You know, because you'll be able to go back afterwards. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, boom, just dash a little bit. And then just walk away. When it's done, you do what you gotta do. That's it. That's it. Say tout. Say très facile ça. It's very easy, guys. Okay, um... I think I had to farm left bottom left, I had to farm bottom left, and it's gonna be right there, I remember that, yep, there he is, kinda startled me, cause I know it's gonna be that close, <laughs> are tentacles coming, yeah they are, alright, um, let's see, yeah, there's one, two, might be three, yeah, there's three, I like the fact that the mixer has the rebound bullet, so if I miss the initial shot, then as I keep moving, it'll just, boom, wrap them up, I'm gonna go, Ashvani a bit because it's going to be time for my next interaction with the harvester so I'm going to clear up my space so that I have more space to dodge and kill any potential soul which come in. I'm going to try and break that from now. Here comes the tentacles. It's going to bait him a bit and then dash. Alright, cool. Now I'm going to continue Ashvani and just clear up some scarabs. I'm going to go back towards him. He's going to despawn now so I can go ahead and just proceed to breaking this. Okay, well, there's no souls from that, unfortunately, but we'll just continue. And it goes again, whatever. Um, let's see. So there's nothing here. I'm gonna go back and farm a little bit north to where I am, and then go back east. So I just move up to about here, and then start moving over. Hopefully, he spawns on my left now, because that'll be really helpful. If he spawns on my right, then it's gonna kind of fuck me over. I have to go left. Perfect, he's on my left. Perfect. Okay, so that's where this section is. I kind of farm this section pretty good. Oh no, he's there. He's there now. Okay, I'm gonna bait the tentacles a bit. Now. That's kinda close, but I got it because I have a dash left, so it's all good. Ugh. He's gonna be right there. He's gonna spawn again, and he's gonna spawn nearby me. Let's listen. No, he's never despawned yet. 
Now you just spawn. It's gonna be on my He's northwest of me. Wow. There's the elevator. I'm not gonna bail out just yet because I have two health caps. So it's like I can really afford to farm around and shit now. Because that's the very last level too. So I can kind of go reckless now if I wanted to. But there's nothing to go reckless on. LOL. So. Hmm. I don't know. I do not know what to do. There are no more souls to farm. Hmm, I guess that's that. Seems like it. I hear him's freaking croaky ass. Let's go check out down here. I mean, I farmed close to the elevator. Maybe there's like a whole farming area down here I'm totally unaware of, right? So I'm gonna... I'm trying not to leave stones unturned. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> leave no stone unturned. <laughs> Puns for days. Alright. Oh, it's the end of the map. Rip. If I go up, I'm gonna get trapped by him. I hear him north where? Northeast now. Okay, so I'm gonna have to go like this. He's gonna be like right around here. I'm gonna kind of like circle him. He's like up here. Okay, he just despawned. So now I can kind of go back. But there's nothing over there. I just stuck there. So I mean, hmm. I guess it really is Ellie time. Watch him trying to intercept me on my way to the elevator. And that's probably gonna be his best bet. Well, he's going to definitely spawn on me in the elevator since I don't have aggro at the moment. But I guess that's that. Hmm. Oh, well. Thanks for watching, guys. This is my little... You know, a little video on Shroud of the Apocrya. I felt I'd actually upload something just because I didn't do on this event. And I know last event I farmed it hella heavy. Because, like, y'all remember I was on the road to a million sigils. I only got, like, 470,000 sigils, which is about, what, 47 Grasping Auras? I literally had 40 Grasping Auras. And then I got, like, a shit ton of materials to make, um, 5-star weapons. Like, I, like, just to think of it, guys, this is, like, the first time that I'm actually farming this event. And I have enough, like, like, the first time I'm actually farming this event since it came out, right? Because I'm farming for a Grasping Aura just for my alt. I'm only farming for one this time. And it's like, I still have enough materials from the last event in order for me to make multiple obsidian weapons, being obsidian carbines, edges, crushers. And the thing with that is that you can actually sell them during the year for some easy profits. Like, you can just make obsidian weapons for 6.5 KCE, sell them off during the year, and make some good, decent profit because it's like... People will ask you to make them if they haven't farmed the event or if they can't be bothered to do it if they missed it. For whatever reason, they just simply can't make it themselves. They'll come to you and they'll be like, yo, can you make me an obsidian carbine? I'll pay the 6.5 KE. You'll be like, alright, sure. You go ahead, you get the freaking Antigua, you craft it. You go back to them and then you tell them, alright, it's made. Here, where the 6.5 KE or whatever, and they'll give it to you. You're gonna buy it, you pocket 2.5 KE. If you guys think of it, 2.5 KE times 2 is 5 KE, which is more than what a Grasping Aura is selling for during event, which is 300k, and then after event, the Grasping Aura sells for like 450k to 550k tops. Is this motherfucker seriously on me? Alright, so like, yeah, anyways, the point is, you guys will make a lot more money if you sell the weapons compared to if you sell the Aura, alright? So it's like... I highly recommend you guys, if you want auras, yeah, go ahead and get them for your character. But don't, uh, don't rely on them too much for making profit. Like, I'll say if you want to farm for auras, farm for like maybe two auras, three auras, tops. But the rest just, just dedicate to the stock of that materials. You can go ahead to the Obsidian Nexus, I'll show you guys. You need 644, I think? 644 or something like that. You need like six Obsidian Shards, and I think it was... Four binding essence and two perfections, maybe. I uh, maybe that makes six four two. Six yeah, I don't know, I'll have to go check. But yeah, like it'll tell you exact like the exact breakdown here as to what you need to make them. Obelisk of creation. Alright. So you need six four two. Alright, perfect. So I, I have enough to make three, as you guys can see. I can make three of these since the last event. I haven't bought a single material in this event. Alright, this is all what I have left from the last one, in terms of materials. So, like, from this event, if I want to, I can easily go ahead and buy more materials, but it's like... I'm definitely gonna do that in a bit. I wanna get the aura first for my ult, put it on bend over, and then more than my shots and stickers, I'm gonna do that, but... Um, right now, I'm content with just having enough to make 3 sin because... 
Like the demand for making these weapons isn't as high as it used to be, but they're still in demand. So I'm probably gonna get a couple more materials after I get that grasping aura. I'm probably just gonna get enough to make like another two weapons really. That that'll be enough. Like five weapons for the year. I'm not expecting to hit that. Just because, like, you know, it's not that buzzing. You know, it's not that like much hype about it. And I'm not too focused on selling those weapons. Of course if you wanted to push them and actually advertise them, then that's different. You should probably work towards making like 10 and actually advertise on a trade channel but I don't do that I just simply leave in my forum post being like yo I'm making obsidian weapons for 6.5k E all year long if you guys want one just holla at me and I'll make it for you it's one of those things you know it's like my residual income I don't rely on these I just leave them there they're my inventory it's like yo if you want one boom I can make it for you so holla you know it's one of those things if you guys want to push something to advertise I still recommend like these are pretty damn good to advertise, man. Not obsidian edges. Don't make them either. Don't make them and have them in your inventory. Just get the materials, let them sit there, and sell obsidian carbines and crushers because those are what actually sells. Everyone goes for the Atron. I had an obsidian edge ASI med and I vendored it, guys. I literally vendored it. Alright, like, that's. I'm not saying the obsidian edge is shitty, it's just shitty compared to an Atron. And the reason why I say that is because even though the Obsidian Edge poisons, it still does less damage to enemies after they're poisoned compared to the Edron. Plus, in order to get that poison, you gotta poison them. I mean, in order to get that damage, you gotta poison them, which requires you to charge. So it's like, if you wanna do higher damage output, you need to charge them first and get the poison. Alright? And it's like, with the Edron, you don't have to rely on the poison to get that higher damage output. Plus, if the enemy happens to be poisoned by an external factor such as a Venom Bailer or a Poison Vial, then boom, you're hitting even more damage. So it's like, that's why the Atron's outclassed. The Blackhawk and Sentenza, those are different things, alright? Like, uh, not the Sentenza, the freaking Graviton Vortex and Sentenza are different things. They're outclassed by this because, like, the poison factor will actually make a difference here. Like, the Graviton Vortex isn't even used mainly to do any status, it's just used to group your enemies together. So it's like, the fact that it does status on top of that is also beneficial some because, um... For one, you don't rely on the bomb itself to kill the enemies, you just rely on it to group them up. So it's like, if you can group them up plus poison them, then boom, you have a poisoned group, which then will get smacked even harder by whatever weapon you're using to charge them. So that's a really great weapon to have, I recommend that. Um, also, the obsidian carbine, as I said, this is a six clip weapon, so you have six bullets in order to poison your enemy. And as you guys know, they already don't have that high of a damage output, and the nerf isn't nearly as notable as that isn't nearly as noticeable as the Atron. And the reason why that is is because, um, as you guys know, they went ahead and they buffed the Atron because the Obsidian Edge was a thing, however, they never buffed the Sentenza. So the damage difference between those two is much, 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 much less significant than the damage difference between the Atron and the Obsidian Edge. Hence why the Obsidian Carbine is by far a much better choice than a Sentenza will ever be, and that's also why I sold my Sentenza, which has more ASI than my current Obsidian Carbine, simply because the Obsidian Carbine is what I prefer to use all the time. Alright? So it's like, that also has a chance to poison enemies, obviously, that's what all the obsidian weapons have a chance to do, that's what they're known for. They're toxic weapons, wink wink. And it's like, every bullet has a chance. It's like, if you have a six clip weapon, well, like the obsidian carbine, and they fire fast, it's like, technically all you gotta do is fire like a one, two bullets, pew pew. If they're poisoned, then great, you can go ahead and switch to your next weapon and just beat them down, because they'll take more damage, right? So it's really helpful like that. So these weapons are really good and I highly recommend you guys, if you want to make the most out of this event, I say farm up for like 2 or 3 auras, tops, tops, 2 or 3 auras, don't go for more than that, you're wasting your time, alright, trust me, like I, I told you guys, I had fucking 40 grasping auras, I had more than 40 grasping auras, bro, that shit, is, uh, I don't know, it's like, the reason why I had so many is not because like, there was no point in me converting all those to materials, cause I would never, by now, I already have enough to make three um, full-on weapons from the previous event, so if I were to convert over all the sigils I had into materials, then I would not come close to ever making all the weapons, like, you know, using all those materials, so it would have been a waste. So, like, I always went for the auras, and that was still great profit, but it's like... The way I saw it is that for the time I spent, it was iffy, it was iffy, like... I'm not mad that I did it, so it's more of a personal challenge. I want to see if it's possible if we can get a million in an event, and I couldn't seem to do it. But, you know, I still I still went like halfway. 470 odd K still isn't shabby. Still definitely not shabby if the farm in one event, so. I'm not, I'm not mad about that, but I'm just saying for everyone else in the general public who might not have the same abilities in this mission, um, 
you guys will be better off just charming for like two or three auras and then going ahead and selling materials and I highly recommend that. And that's that's my best word of advice I can give you guys. Like honestly, the aura right now is worth not much. It's not worth your time. I'm only getting it for my alt. Like I'm literally putting it on my alt account, guys. Like that's the only reason why I'm even here. I pretty much said I'm not gonna be doing this mission once, but it's like fuck, here I am in this mission doing it to get an aura for my alt, so you know, it's whatever. I don't have anything against this event. I think it's actually pretty damn good considering that they give you a chance to make some amazing weapons for pretty much free. All you gotta do is play the game. That's great. You don't have to pay anything. You know what I mean? It's not hard to get these items either. Like, you, after a few runs, you already have enough sigils to get the freaking weapon, right? So that's awesome. You also get the orbs for free. So um, it, it's really great. It's great. I'm nothing wrong with this event. I'm just saying that the aura itself, the value in that, it's gone down a shit ton. I remember back when I paid 869k for a grasp grasping aura once, 770k for a grasping aura once. You know, like those shits used to be money. Those used to be good sources of money. Now they're selling them 275k, 300k during the event. Like what? 480k to 525k, 550k after the event. It's nothing. It's nothing, bro. It's nothing. Like, like bruh. That's nothing. Bro. I'm telling you guys. I'm telling you guys from now. Um, so yeah, that, that's really it. Um, I'm just gonna be here chilling. I'm gonna be doing a 24 hour stream sometime during July, so. Well, I, I don't know, like, I definitely want to do it, so I'm gonna do it during July. It's just I don't know when, like, which day. I haven't specified that yet. Um, but yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully, you guys learned something from it. How to maximize your profits from this, and. Ugh. How to maximize your profits from this mission along with how to do the mission successfully without wasting all the profits that you could potentially make on the sparks of life doing the mission, alright? So like actual basic techniques and shit like that. Um, yeah guys, so don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace out, YouTubers. Wait, you actually make money from this shit? Really? Oh yeah, yeah, I remember now, I remember now, yeah. There's actually fights. Haha. <laughs>